Hi there. Good afternoon. If you happen to catch this live or close to live, <laughs> it is a time we've never been on before for a live show, and this won't be long. It's pop on to pop off, and my name is Jack Willard, and uh, we have nobody right now, but, you know, this is not our normal time, but the replay crowd will be there, I'm sure. And uh, all I'm doing is coming on to tell you about a new series that we're beginning today that I'm very excited about. There'll be multiple chapters to this series, How Elvis May Have Faked His Death. We're going to try to lay it out in a way uh, that had it, it has not been done before. Some of the material will be familiar, but we're putting it uh, together in various packages. And uh, part one of our series is the Bixby investigation. Now, later on in the series, we'll probably uh, do some more, Bill, but um, we will uh, we will uh, have Mr. Bixby on uh, in the first show that I'm about to load here as soon as I begin this pop on to pop off. Well, we had um, some people join us. There's eight watching right now. Who are you and where are you from? Are you our regulars or are you new people? We have a lot of people when we come on with Worldwide Ramblings Saturday nights. This Saturday night, the 30th of March, if you happen to be watching this live, you may be watching this a long time down the road, but you'll still be able to find the show, the 3-30-24 live show, Worldwide Ramblings. Yes. Worldwide Ramblings <laughs> will be on Saturday night, the 30th. We're going to move it up to 10 o'clock by your request. I'm here to please, Louise. Anybody named Louise anymore? Are you named Louise? I'd like to hear from all the Louises. Wheezy, as they said on the Jeffersons, as Mr. Jefferson said. But uh, that'll be tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, and it's going to be all fun. No politics on this one. And uh, let's see, Pam Donnelly fa uh, finds us. I mean, she's she's got sonar. She's got a built-in GPS. I have a built-in defibrillator in my chest just for as a precaution because I have cardiomyopathy. But thank God I'm doing real well. And uh, she has a GPS uh, that lets her know what's going on there. She doesn't have to put it in her phone, you know, she can find anything on the planet, you know, get in the car, just go. So hi, Pam Donnelly. It's me, Jack. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. And M. Silva from the great state of Texas is here too. Cool subject. Oh, there's going to be so many things. <laughs> this is, you know, one of those stories that has so much information. Like next week, we'll do some Priscilla stuff. I um, was surprised. Uh, few months ago to realize that, you know, not every Elvis fan likes her, uh, but we're going to have some Priscilla stuff on our second show. I know this stuff, but um, this is Mr. Bixby's uh, introduction. Um, and nothing will be longer than 20 minutes, okay? Nothing will be longer than 20 minutes. It'll usually come in under 20 minutes because I know, you know, that's the right thing to do. Uh, I have to watch the replay Sunday. Well, uh, Sunday is when you'd watch the replay, Easter Sunday. Wow, I'm honored. Got something going on tomorrow night. Well, that's all right. That's all right. This is Good Friday, and we want to commemorate that. The, the, uh, the uh, day we remember when Jesus Christ uh, went to the cross. He didn't have to do that. God, the Father, didn't have to give his very best gift, his son. But um, the Bible tells us that God requires the, uh, the shedding of blood for the remission of sins, for the atonement of sins. And so Jesus Christ became the, the sacrificial lamb for all of us if we receive it into our hearts, if we receive Jesus into our hearts. So this is the day that he was crucified on the cross. This is the day we commemorate it, commemorate it. It's not about being right with a calendar. Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, but it's the day we commemorate it. Hi, Bobby James. If that's not a radio name, I know there are DJs named Bobby James. 
a lot of, of DJs named Bobby and a lot of them with the last name James. So amen, amen. Hi, Linda Justice. You found this too. Happy Easter to you and Karen. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, Bobby. What happened to uh, Memphis News, the investi investigation of Elvis? It was brought up and kind of uh, dropped after several weeks with investigation. Well, uh, maybe in my email, you can tell me more exactly what you mean. Jack the fair guy at gmail.com. Jack the F-A-I-R guy at gmail.com because I'm not exactly sure what you uh what you mean, but I know we're beginning an investigation and you know, the great thing about this, since it's going to be multiple chapters is you can make suggestions in the email or in the comments. I prefer you not do it in the live stream. If you have a really good suggestion, put it in the replay version, because as soon as we complete this pop on to pop off the uh, live broadcast, it'll be available for uh, replay in the live section of this channel, the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned. I can look back at the live stream, but uh, it's uh, it's harder to find it, you know. So um, if you would do that, because I know some of you guys have some great ideas. I can't say I'll use every one of them, but I'll certainly uh, look over what you have to say, you know. And we've got many chapters to do this. Um, so hello, Linda Powell. I think you're new. <laughs> you say you're new. Hi. See, I knew if I come on different times, I'll see some new people. I'll meet some new friends. Hopefully, you'll be able to join us for the, the serious live show, which is Worldwide Ramblings tomorrow. Um, I've been watching for some time, but have never uh, commented. That's like on a radio talk show. People will listen to somebody like a Clay and Buck, or as they used to listen to the great Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, uh, or even the great the great liberal talk show host, the late great Alan Combs. We need more liberals like Alan was, you know. So first of all, someone who knows how to do radio, you can't help. You couldn't help but like Alan Combs. He was that good. God rest his soul. Uh, I used to, uh, I used to be a Linda Powell too. Well, isn't that quite a cool winky dink? Linda Justice, her maiden name, I guess, that she uh, had when she was on her maiden voyage, uh, <laughs> was Linda Powell. So that is more than a little cool. We was married to uh, the kid's father for almost 10 years. I like how you put that. I was married to the kid's father for almost 10 years. I got uh, 17, 7, and now I've been with Karen for uh, 14 years, and she has uh, barred the door, ladies and gentlemen. So welcome, 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 uh, Linda Powell. We have actually two Linda Powells here, Linda Powell Justice and Linda Powell. That's pretty cool. I don't think that uh, that uh, would happen. So anybody else out there? Because we have 15 watching, and I don't think I have 15 names. You can make up a name, but let me know where you're watching from. I'm most interested in where you're watching from because that, that always uh, is good. Cheryl Larson, hi, from Southern California, where it never rains except in February. Then the houses start to slide down the hill. <laughs> I was there. I remember, oh, we want to make that trip to Los Angeles, uh, Cheryl Larson. So bad. July 5th and 6th. Well, we, we have to be out there, you know, for more than that. Maybe uh, come in on like the, uh, I don't know, the 3rd or the 4th and stay to the 8th or something like that. Because they're having the uh, Dark Shadows Convention. The last one they'll ever be on planet Earth, I'm pretty sure. Uh, with the surviving cast members, and it's going to be in Burbank. Not sure of the building yet. I've been to Burbank. I saw Johnny Carson back in the day when I lived in L.A. for a year. In fact, the first time I saw Johnny Carson, I was just visiting, and that's when I ran into Norman Burady, who's uh, long passed away now, but he lived in Dunkirk, New York, and he told me about this radio station, WBUZ, The Sound of the Country. And I knew that uh, I had a better shot at radio than I had at uh, being a uh, being an actor. So um, sure enough, I ended up uh, going to Dunkirk. Uh, Norman became my landlord. Um, and uh, then I uh, began working at WBUZ in nearby Fredonia, New York. It's now defunct in Fredonia, but it's an FM 
music station in uh, Nashville, I'm told. Yeah, it's back on the air. They reassigned the call letters. Hi, one hip chick from Oklahoma. Even at uh, 1240 ish in the afternoon, almost uh, on a, a good Friday. So glad that you're here. And um, we're just doing a quick uh, thing here, uh, talking about our new series that I'm going to load after I talk to this dandy andy handy dandy andy my engineer also known as red bear is twitch still around he's a gamer look for red bear if you can still find him and uh he does all those games you know and he was in here and put it together pretty quick and i still didn't learn it because he said oh they it's funny that they make me do this i have to put a filter on or something and then he has to make sure the levels you know because my levels were different than than uh, what's in the bill bixby uh, clips that we show and uh you know uh, when they go to elvis himself he's kind of low so it kind of evens it out hopefully and um we're going to um we're going to uh enjoy releasing this part one of our series now on saturday nights when we come on for worldwide ramblings um it um talk often turns to elvis and also pastor bob joyce and that's uh, still fine no censorship as long as you're respectful most people are we're very fortunate here in that we've got a really good bunch of people you know we've got a really good bunch of people yeah you uh you remind me again someday i'll get it in my head uh one hip check that you are in oklahoma you're living on tulsa time are you or are you in Oklahoma City? Or uh, what other place could I possibly pull out of my noggin? Oh, I could. I could. Because my son was going to the Family Dollar uh, uh, Warehouse. Oh, man. I mean, he, he goes to a different one now. He goes to uh, Odessa, Texas. He's uh, working for night transportation now. Um, but he's still delivering the Family Dollar. See how funny it is if you get a, a new job, it often is related to the job you just had. Like if you worked as a car salesman, you just go to another dealership. I've seen this happen with the people I met at Middletown Honda. I was never a car salesman, um, but I, I, I did clean the place for a while and I lost 35 pounds doing it. So uh, Norman, Oklahoma, Norman! Norman, you're making me think of Norman Bates, Norman and Norma Bates. Oh, I want Bates Motel back. I want Freddie Highmore. He's about done with a good doctor. He's probably shooting the last couple of episodes now. It's not coming back next year. And I want him to return to Bates Motel. I want him to talk to those creators that threw away the biggest show they'll ever do. And uh, I want him to do it right this time. It'll be uh, Norman as an adult, even though Freddie still looks so young. And bring back Vera from Farmiga and Max uh, Theorot, who's been on that uh, CBS show. And that other guy from SWAT, Kenny, Kenny uh, from SWAT. And bring back all the cast members, uh, except this time maybe... Uh, that his uh, his girlfriend that's on oxygen in the beginning would be played by the co-star that he has on The Good Doctor. And I know her name like I know my own, but um, um, can't, can't come up with it right at the moment. Dog Lover is here. Love you, Jack. Love you, too. Dog Lover, whether you're a man or a woman. Ken Larkin from Larkin Store here in Middletown is here. Always great listening to Jack. That's so uh, nice because this is a crucial time for this channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really hoping this Elvis series goes, you know, without focusing on who he may be. As I say, if major breaking news comes out of Pastor Bob Joyce's mouth, we'll be delivering it here. But uh, let's give him a break, okay? <laughs> let's give him a break and... Uh, um, let's talk about, uh, what all led up to this. This is like a prequel, I guess you could say to Bob Joyce. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a, a prequel. I need a more comfortable chair. I'll have to work on that. That's on my list. But now, you know, my 95 year old gentleman that I worked with for a year and a half passed away a couple of days ago. I announced that on our Wednesday special edition of worldwide ramblings. It's, uh, you can find that right here in the live section of this channel, the Virtual Church of the Disillusion, the show from the 27th of March. And uh, Puff Daddy is the thumbnail. And that, 
struggling to get the 500 views even you know there you go no magic words in there if i don't put those magic words and do do something on it i'm fighting i'm fighting and so uh i uh, really think we're going to uncover some really cool things here and bring them together in a way that they haven't been brought uh, before and if it if it's working i'm not opposed to doing my first zoom interviews uh, we've got to get, I was saying that to Andy, it's time to do the Zoom interviews. But I also know that this is the subject, the Elvis Bob Joyce topic is is what, you know, people want to hear. And so if I have somebody uh, to, coming on and talking about uh, 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 green, better environmental farming, I don't think I'm going to hold an audience, you know, because my audience is not that. Home of Toby Keith, Norman, really. Really, Bobby James. Boy, is that a radio name. Um, yeah, he, he, he fought the good fight. He, he said, I threw everything but the kitchen sink at this, but it's just not meant to be. And even when he was near death, propped up with pillows, doing a video, thanking everybody, he still looked good. You know, he still looked good <laughs> in his last days. Uh, you, people usually look very different in the last days, but he just looked thinner, of course. Um, so I'm glad uh, M. Silva's here from Texas. And uh, look at that. This could be a hookup. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Yes, Bobby at Bobby James. I live just over a mile from where Toby lived. Oh, my goodness. Um, don't blame Elvis for the witness protection after uh ratting out the mob well we're going to tell that part of the story i'm sure bobby um and i have i have mentioned that he testified before um and i believe that's one of the reasons he may have entered the uh, witness protection program as john borrows so we're definitely going to get into that you know uh now if you watch the verdict we talk about it there my most popular video but um yeah, we're, we're definitely going to get uh, into that. Um, there's so many components that lead up to what may have happened in 2011, ladies and gentlemen, uh, with, with Pastor Bob. Some of you would believe that, and some of you don't. Some of you believe the Elvis faked his death part, but you don't think that uh, the pastor is, is Elvis. And so that's cool. There's just so much involved here. People, you know, have come on and said a um, couple of things come to mind here. Uh, first of all, there was one person, I think maybe a young person, the youngest uh, member I know in our audience, because I don't know how old you are, Bobby James. Sweet! <laughs> sweet! I know people used to say sweet a lot. Young people. Uh, see, now I'm old talking about young people. We're all back when in my day, Sonny. <laughs> Those whippersnappers. <laughs> Those whippersnappers today. <laughs> we would have uh, applied some knowledge to their seat of understanding, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> it's funny when you start to become your parents, you know. And, of course, my parents are both gone. But, um yeah, uh, someone came on and was uh, they just couldn't understand the whole concept of why Elvis in 2024 is still such a big deal. You know, well, uh, think of Taylor Swift now. I think this would apply. And think in 20 years what Taylor Swift uh, could be. She could be like the next Elvis, I think. Not Madonna. She's not going to make it. Britney is not going to make it. Dude. No, she ain't going to make it. <laughs> uh, uh, too much of the tatas and, and, and not enough uh, sensibilities. Sorry about that. I'm sorry, Sam Sammy. Hello, Jack with many K's. I'm not in the KKK, Sam Semi. I believe that God uh, does not make junk. He makes uh, uh, good people and, uh, and, and people go bad. It's not about what your skin color is. It's about your character, your behavior. It's especially about your behavior because character takes a long time to develop in life. Who am I kidding to think that I have uh, always good character? I'm 68 years old and still working on it. But behavior is a choice you can make in any situation. You can say, I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm going to count to 10 before I say something stupid and, that, and and go for a walk if I have to. But I'm not going to... 
I'm not going to be a puppet, a robot that keeps saying the same things over that I know are hurtful and that are, are not in my best interest either. I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but what I tried to explain to this uh, this person who was couldn't understand about the Elvis thing, there's nobody else. I don't care who you want to go to, Frank Sinatra, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Ringo, Mick Jagger, Keith Richard, they're not Elvis. They're not Elvis. Nobody has the staying power of Elvis Presley. Not like this. It's a whole other genre. You can take, you know, uh, whoever you think may be the biggest star on the planet, and Elvis is bigger. In 2024, I don't know how to express it better than that. More people, a lot of women, but men too that wanted to be Elvis. Uh, and, and, and I grant you that... that w- that audience that, that thinks that is increasingly in the obituaries or maybe in the next 10, 20, 30 years, but it's not going away anytime soon. It's not going away anytime soon. No star has that kind of staying power, that kind of interest that continues. Believe me, I've been doing this for eight, uh, for six and a half. So years now, this Elvis slash Bob Joyce topic and it, it just keeps feeding itself. The pastor has a lot to do with feeding it. And uh, there's just so much more to talk about. And uh, we have, you know, obviously a number of videos here on the topic. Uh, I just put up again, if there's been one video that I've heard over and over again, why did you take down the 21 coincidences why Bob Joyce may be Elvis? Which I did when we only had a mic and a camera. And then everybody starts showing their mics, you know, like, here, look at the size of my mic. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, <laughs> some mics are too big. Um, so you got to pump the volume up a little bit more, but it's fine. And uh, I don't agree with everything I said in there. I actually said Jeannie C. Riley was dead when she's not. I don't, I don't agree with that because she isn't. And uh, I probably said in that video, if I was talking about Walena at that point, and I probably was, that uh, she was just too young to be uh, perhaps Bob Joyce's uh, uh, wife. I don't believe that anymore. So, you know, there's stuff in there that's a little dated, but uh, for the most part, it's got 46,000 views and it's back up. The 21,000 coincidences, it's a it's a 50-hour video. No, the 21 coincidences, I haven't had anything to drink. Why do you think that? You're so judgmental. You're so judgmental, one hip chick from Norman, Oklahoma. <laughs> no, she's just, she's enamored by Bobby James now. It's all Bobby James, Bobby James. It's usually Brenda, Brenda, Brenda. Is she here yet? <laughs> Hello, Brenda. And oh, Jeanette is here. Hi, Jeanette. I'm glad you're here. One of our uh, worldwide ramblings people. And, um, um, 28 watching now please check in even if you call your uh uh call yourself um chuck manson i don't care but let me know where you're watching from let me know where you're watching from okay okay a college town home of the sooners yes they'll win a championship sooners or later right you want him um the sooners how, how, how come I haven't heard of that? Anna. Would you prefer Anna or Anna? Remember Patty Duke, her book? Her name was really, I'm trying to think if she said Anna or Anna, but her um, her book and, and probably a movie was called My Name is Anna or Anna. And they told the whole story, you know, about her struggle being bipolar uh, and what have you. And, uh, how she overcame that. Yeah. But how the heck do you have identical cousins in the Patty Duke show? And I'll tell you how much they looked alike. It was like the same actress was playing both roles. <laughs> of course, she uh, later went on to uh, that movie where she, you know, she portrayed the character, her life story. And it was pretty compelling. Debbie Inglis. How are you? Hi, Jack. 
you got a, a live. I just happened to come on and pop on to pop off to promo my new series that I'm going to load after I talk to you. How Elvis may have faked his death. It's going to be multiple chapters. When I'm done, I'll know it. You know, <laughs> you'll let me know too. Um, I'm really hoping this will go because, uh, you know, we took a little bit of a dive here. Having said that, this month, this uh, month that includes Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Maudy Thursday is already passed. Uh, this is the biggest month in the history of this channel. But uh, we announced we were taking a, a break from the Bob Joyce topic, unless he produces major breaking news. Um, and um, so I didn't put the magic title in the, uh, or which can either be Elvis, Bob Joyce, or both. Uh, obviously, I will in the Elvis series. And we took a nosedive. We're struggling to get to 500 views with P. Diddy's mug in the, uh, in the uh, as the thumbnail of the video. It's a good live show, so check it out. Check it out when you can. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, as Harvey Levin said from TMZ when he was talking about some other performer that had tried something new, he says, number one, uh, Number one, fact and show business, know your audience. So, you know, I just have to accept that, uh, you know, you'll let me talk about politics a little bit and not hang up the phone, so to speak. But you don't want much of that. You you want what we do and uh, what we have done uh, since 2018. 2018, the channel began in 2016, but I didn't, I didn't even know about Pastor Bob Joyce then. I didn't. So uh, that's still fair game here in the live section, but I'm not going to put those words for a while. I'm leaving the pastor alone. We did a video uh, pointing out, and I'm not going to keep mentioning this, that uh, that someone uh, that used to go to his congregation, maybe they're going to go back. I have a feeling they're going to go back. Um, that someone that used to go to his congregation put up a post four months ago, which I didn't react to at that time. Uh, saying that he left and the the reasons why he left. Enough said. Enough said, Ken Larkin, okay? The generosity of Elvis Presley in 1960-61, he donated proceeds from his concert in Hawaii. Uh, he did a concert then. He did one in 72, so now I'm already confused. His concert in Hawaii towards the USS Arizona Memorial construction. He had a very generous heart. Yeah, he definitely did, Ken. And we'll have to hit that during our uh, special. You know how I'm going to say the name just above you. You're sick of it, aren't you? You're sick of it. I can understand. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just one more guy. I had to deal when I was a kid with uh, the movie Willard came out, which was about uh, a rat tamer, wonderfully played by Bruce Davidson. I would get to tell him this story just off Hollywood Boulevard many years later. I love Bruce Davidson. He's still around. He's old, but he's he was recently in a movie with Barbara Hershey that you can find on Prime Video. It was great. She's old. He's old. <laughs> it's just amazing to see your sex symbols. And I did have a big crunch on Barbara Hershey in the 70s. Older now. She still, you know, looks fine. She looks fine. Anyway, um, Willard was the rat tamer, and he had all these rats, and this was before CGI. You can't fake this. And, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm covered in rats. Ernest Borgnine was covered in rats and said he had nightmares after this film. He would wake up in a cold sweat for a long time, the original film Willard. But, of course, in school, I was Willard the rat now. You know, no, and I, I don't know how many times I said, well, Willard was the rat tamer. <laughs> like they cared, you know, like they cared. And so then the great, uh, but very weird Crispin Glover, you know him as, uh, as George McFly, McFly, the great Crispin Glover did the remake of, uh, Willard, um, uh, number of years ago, maybe 10, 12 years ago. Uh, and, uh, that was CGI though. That was CGI. Nobody was covered in rats in that movie. You see. You see, you see. Jack, will you ever go there to his church? 
Uh, I said that I in, in this uh, last video that I did that Pastor Bob is a great man of God. I said that um, that we will uh, that I will never go there. That was my feeling at that time because I'm not wanted there. Now, th when when I do that, someone probably from the church will pipe on and say, "Oh, you'd always be welcome here, uh, uh, um, Jack." I'd need to hear that from someone in the inner circle. No disrespect, but, you know, uh, just because Pastor Job is a wonderful man doesn't mean that he necessarily wants to have the guy walking in that's been annoying him for six and a half years, which was never my intention. That's why I said at the beginning of the whole thing, if, you, if the pastor has a problem, I said this in 2018, you know you've heard me say this, but some of you may be new. Um, if he has a problem with, uh, with uh, me doing the topic, all he has to do is video message me, video call me on Facebook, uh, messenger so i'll know it's him it doesn't have to be a long call i'm not going to ask him any questions except maybe how's the weather in uh, benton and hopefully it would be cordial and uh, that would be that um so i did that for six and a half years and he never answered i don't know if that uh, offers even on the table anymore because i'm not planning on doing any new programming unless he creates major breaking news because then as the chronological storyteller i have to do that you know um, Steven Spellich is here. I've been calling him Spielich, and he says, no, uh, it's Steven Spellich, but you can call me Steven Spinach. And I thought that was very nice of you, Steven, because uh, spinach just uh, is funnier. <laughs> um, so will I ever go to the church? Well, if I ever was going to go, if I ever was going to go, if I were going to go, <laughs> I don't have any water over here. I don't got the waters. But I'm not waters, and this is not my world. Well, this is my world, but I'm not waters. This is my world, waters. Not that I wouldn't have you on to promo your new book, but let's face it, you ain't coming on here. Jesse Waters isn't coming on here. He's out there promoing his book, which is number one on the New York Times bestseller. That's great when a conservative can have that. Um... If I ever were to go, it would be August 11th. They're having the big shindig uh, put on by Gene Ho, former campaign photographer, uh, to uh, President Trump, who's the editor. Someone said he's not the owner. Okay, maybe you're right. Uh, uh, the editor of, um, of George Magazine. And... Um, Saturday, there'll be a bunch of speakers. It's a paid event. I think it starts at 145 for the day, but you're going to need a hotel room, and they recommend some deals they got. And you may have to fly in to um, Little Rock Airport and get yourself to uh, Hot Springs, which is not too far from Benton at all. But on Sunday, it's all free. Pastor Bob is going to move the service to the convention center in Hot Springs and then follow it with a baptismal service. So if I were ever going to go, it would be that day. Because, you know, the church, let's face it, is growing. And uh, by Popcorn Sutton, that's what I've been calling them all this time, Popcorn Sutton said in one Sunday there were people from 28 different states. And, then, and instead of celebrating that, it ticked him off. <laughs> go figure. Uh, and then there's many different countries often too. So the only a hundred and so seats and the, you know, the, the regular people got to get in there. So you could end up in the fellowship hall watching on closed circuit TV. I'm not saying you won't get to see the pastor and have a moment with him. He'll sign stuff and what have you, but take a picture, but, oh boy, you know, they need a bigger space and supposedly they may be working on that. Scott Baker found us. He doesn't believe uh, Bob is Elvis and that's fine. I think I'm right about that. Elvis Tombstone reads Elvis Aaron Presley. Wrong spelling. Well, yes, we have mentioned that from the very beginning, but you're uh, so right. Uh, probably you'll hear that in somebody saying that in maybe part one of what I'm about to release here, which is how Elvis faked his death with uh, this series will have plenty of rolling video in every single installment. So it's not just going to be me telling the story, but you're going to hear from the people themselves. And next, next edition will be Priscilla Presley with some clips and on and on. I'm not saying um, 
in the beginning. It won't will be new stuff that you may not have seen before, but it's never come together like it's going to come together here. And then I'm open to doing a Zoom interview or two, yeah, for for this series later on. Uh, one day I will go there and say hi to him. Won't tell him I'm an Elvis fan. Please don't. That is so uncool. That is so uncool. That's like meeting the parents of your uh, um, of your uh, new girlfriend and saying, you know, I'd really like to sleep with your daughter. It's it's, it's that uncool, you know. <laughs> Why do I say these things, uh, Ken Larkin? Uh, I believe that the Lord uh, works. So you're going to get me centered back to what's really important through people. And Elvis has been a great means to draw attention in modern times, thanks to Pastor Bob. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, have I missed anybody new? Oh, yes. I haven't said hello to Michael G., also known as Mikhail Gorbachev, Mikhail Baryshnikov. There's a lot of uh, coughs there. Watching from Higginsville, Missouri. That's so cool. Uh, tell us, what is, uh, if I were to go to Higginsville, Missouri, uh, Mikhail, what are uh, two or three things that I would have to visit in Higginsville? Whether it be your favorite restaurant, uh, whatever they have there. Because I could tell you a bunch here. You know, but some of them have gone away, like Tony Boffa's restaurant after 63 or so years. It's gone, you know. Uh, they just closed the Entenmann shop in uh, the town of Goshen. Not that I go there anymore because it's just too tempting for somebody like me who needs to lose some weight. And I'll be doing my walking soon. And uh, But they've closed all of them, I'm told. Entenmann's. And they were busy. They were busy. Uh, so what are you going to do now with the stuff that's about to be outdated? That's only three or four days away from being outdated. They had fresher stuff there, too. Um, what are you going to do with that? You're going to give it to the homeless or something? You're going to give it to the immigrants? What are you going to do with it? Or are you, you going to just keep it on the shelf and hope nobody notices? It's a way of saying, we're going to charge full price now. We're not giving you three of these for $7 or whatever, you know? We're not going to give you the cinnamon buns, the uh, the lovely sheet cake. My favorite is the devil's food with the marshmallow topping. Huh? And um, lemon cake is good, too. But they used to put the coconut on it. They put the lime and the coconut. It would make you feel better. And um, there's some other Entenmann things I like, some that are not so great. Uh, but no more Entenmann's, uh, you know, uh, what do you call those things? <laughs> those discount retail places? No more Entenmann's. And, and my people on a tight budget used to love that, you know. Be, be good to make sure your belly ever expands, I'll tell you that much. Ida, hi. You joined us uh, Saturday night, I believe. How are you, Ida? Hello, Mr. Jack. Hello to you, Ida. I'm so honored that you're here. And Adrian is here. So say yo to Adrian because he's he or she is sick of it. I'm not sure if it's a she. I'm guessing a she. But uh, what's that actor's name whose first name is Adrian? He's got intense eyes. <clears throat> I'll never get that one because I've only seen him a couple of times. Um, yeah, lots of people would like to go to uh, Household of Faith. Robin Roman found us here. This may be the earliest that we've ever been on. Hello, Jack. Happy Good Friday. Yeah, yeah. Um, Johnny. What's his last name? Johnny from Warder's World. Um, not Well, he doesn't call it that anymore. He says it at the end, but it's, of course, prim Jesse Warder's prime time. And so he's interviewing people wherever he was out there. Often he's at Port Authority if he's not on the beach or something like that. And he says to this blonde uh, woman, young blonde woman, uh, what, what what's this Good Friday about? It, it, it's a day when something really good happened. And he says, Jesus died. And she says, oh, blank. <laughs> Linda Day, this Generation Z has me concerned. I'm not too sure about the X, Y, and those millennials are responsible because they uh, didn't teach their children any kind of a moral basis. You know, they didn't like the rules, the millennials. So they said, I'm not doing that to my kids. If they want to, you know, swear when they're angry, 
Um, they can, you know, when they're angry. So now you're going to have, and this happened, um, I know of it happening, a nine-year-old saying when they, when they got really upset, F you, mom. There's the fruit of your parenting, of your modern, modern, modern parenting. If I ever told that to my mother at nine years old, I think her entire um, 33 and a third album collection would come flying at me like a, like a Frisbee, like a Frisbee, like a virgin, like a surgeon cutting for the very first time. Weird Al. Love him, love him, love him. Melbourne, Florida. Oh, who was the great preacher from Melbourne, Florida? Probably passed away now. Used to be on TBN all the time, and I used to watch him all the time. And his church was in Melbourne, Florida. Boy, it's been so long. I don't know that he's he's passed away, but very pleasant face, very good preacher, and he was from Melbourne. Uh, Anna is in East Texas. Well, you know, I'm not good at geography, Anna, Anna. I'm just not. So if you say, um, you know, um, head east and I don't have a GPS and, and I'm not here in my city where I know east, west, north and south because I used to drive a cab here for a very short time. Uh, if the dispatcher said, well, we'll head to the north, we're going to have something there soon, I'm sure. Uh, I knew which way to go. But uh, you put me in the middle of a field in Wyoming and say, head east. <laughs> See, I have a GED, a GED. You only had to have 35 to pass the math portion. You know, now you had to have a combined score of other things. I did very well in English and what have you to get to a certain number. But you could pass the math with 35. I got 34 and they gave it to me. So that ought to tell you some. Oh, Tyler, Texas, R.W. Shambach. Do you know of whom I speak? The late, great R.W. Shambach from Tyler, Texas. That was his P.O. box. Box probably one. Tyler, Texas. And boy, did I hear and see him on TBN with his hanky sweating as he strutted around. Always had that belly. But I remember R.W. Shambach from Tyler, Texas. I do, I do, I do. Janet Williams found us. Blessed Holy Friday, Jack, and everyone for uh, for Al and Jan, in, from Al and Jan in New Mexico. Yeah, Jan being Janet, and uh, um, her husband says, you can call me Al. That's a great song by Paul Simon. What song does Paul Simon hate to do? won't do he only does it if he messes up a song he'll start to sing a little of that song on the fly what song does paul simon hate the most anybody want to um and i'm talking about he could be with garfunkel now don't get me wrong i'm not talking he's doing a solo concert here although he would do simon and garfunkel songs there too what song does he hate the most janet williams i'm so crazy i don't even know and this is not the day to be crazy you know um, this is the day to be thankful because if he be not risen, if he be not risen, or risen, if he be not risen, our whole religion is in vain. We've got to call in the dogs, pee on the fire. As I heard a pastor say once, if I'm wrong, I won't even know. If you're wrong, you've got everything to lose, everything to lose. Katina Swatsworth joins us. Hey, Jack, God bless everyone over this good friday and easter celebration yes 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 thank you katina swatsworth um scarborough affair um it's fair isn't it affair scarborough affair are you going to scarborough affair parsley sage rosemary and thyme um why would he? That's a classic. <laughs> That's a good one. I bet you he still does that if he can. So he doesn't have that much of a voice left, and he's got issues. Can't play too much guitar for too long, like Peter Frampton. If you go to see Peter Frampton now, which is uh, not as plentiful as it used to be, he will pick up the guitar at some point, but he can't play for too long. He's got backup people to do that for him, you know? Forget about, do you feel like we do? Bah, 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 bah. 
Oh, I got all these things in my head. All this <laughs> knowledge I can't use. We have Marifest next month. I've heard about that uh, probably from you, though, Linda Justice. What do they do at Marifest? Um, yeah. So he's going to go. Now, again, you're picking uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. You're, you're, um, you're picking a, a song, of course, he would want to do. And didn't that band, uh, what's their name? What are that guy's name? I know this. I love that version, the new version of Sound of Silence. If you're gonna do a if you're gonna do a remake, do it like that guy did it. He made it such a powerful song, as opposed to a mellow, very biting song as well. No, you haven't gotten there yet. Disturbia. Disturbed or Disturbia? Isn't Disturbia a movie? <laughs> and Disturbed is the group. I'm just guessing, Janet Williams, you know, I'm, uh, but I was, uh, I was ready to call that the great song that it is. Just like when Manford and, I mean, Mumford and Sons did that song with a banjo. I thought, well, that's a great song. He did a song called Graceland. He did, right? Hmm. No, that's not it. That's not it. I suppose I'm going to have to give somebody a hint if they don't get it. Um, the hint is where Biden was last night raising money with uh, Obama, who called uh, Biden a great president. <laughs> Lost all respect for Barack Hussein Obama. Hussein Obama. <laughs> Obama, as my friend Tommy always says, every time I've ever heard him say that name, it's always Obama. But anyway... Um, while uh, they were trying to raise millions at Radio City Music Hall. Um, here's another clue, right? Um, President Trump was over at the funeral home in Massapequa for the slain officer. Personal invitation. And the wife uh, wanted him to, to hug him. And uh, he, he spent so much time. You know, people say he's, he's such a horrible man. It's not true. He's a sinner. But so is everybody that's ever been president of the United States. Even Jimmy Carter said he had lust in his heart. Uh, Sunday school teacher, you know. But anyway, uh, he spent so much time with everybody there. And uh, the, uh, the gentleman, who I think is also a politician, a good friend of Donald Trump, said, I've never seen this at a wake. But when it was time for him to leave, they gave him a standing ovation. I don't know about the selling the Bibles thing for $60, but I do know that uh, he is far much a better choice than Mr. Biden has been in three years. Shame on him. He has proven himself not to be a Christian, proven himself not to be one by what he has done, by what he has done. Again, oh, well, this is somebody else. This is not Adrian. This is Robinson. I, I, you see, I don't know how many of these songs he does now because uh, there'd be a lot of call for that because it's another classic song. No, it would be a song that was a hit. It was a hit, but um, he, uh, he thinks it's a, a little bit trite. And um, one of the key lines from that song was in a commercial, at least one, maybe more. I'm going to have to look up the lyrics now because uh, I got to get that line. It would be sublime if I could get that line. I won't do a line, though. Never have. One time. I don't want to talk about it. And in that one experience, ladies and gentlemen, I learned what the devil's counterfeit for peace was. And I said, no more. No more. Mm-hmm. Da 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 dum. 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 Okay, I've got it. 
it's one of those songs that uh, has a main title and then a title in brackets. That ought to give it to you right there. You know, give it to you right there. And it's the brackets part that has made numerous commercials. Yeah, baby. Honesty is such a lonely word. Everyone is so untrue. Honesty is hardly ever heard, but mostly what I need from you. Billy Joel needed one more song from the album. One more song for the album. They're in the studio. He doesn't have it. He's sitting there with the keyboards, and someone mentions the something's choked me up. I don't know why. As I get older, more and more things choke me up. Um, like if I were to talk about Bill Bixby too long, I would start to cry. Because what you're going to see in this, uh, the be beginning of this series that we're going to begin as soon as I shut me mouth and load it, uh, it reminded me how much I loved Bill Bixby and how so sorry I am that he. He had a horrible death at 59. Anyway. Um, thank you, Katina, but I am, I'm going to be honest with you. What is that song that talks about this? Um, yes, Hurt, that Johnny Gash did a remake of. Was that Nine Inch Nails that did that or another band like that that did... Uh, um, I will make you hurt. I will disappoint you. I will make you hurt. If you watch me long enough, I will do that. My flesh will come forth. It just has a way of doing that. And I, I'm, I'm so hoping this uh, special goes because I don't want to have to go to what else I know, you know, because it's, I can't preach the gospel here. I'll get 28 views. I'll get 169 views. It's, you know, uh, there's so many doing it that are much more equipped, that have walked a much more successful talk. But I can share as the Holy Spirit gives me, and that's what I do. Anybody find that song yet? <laughs> um, but Mrs. Robinson, such a good song, Scott. I can't tell you how much that song meant to me. I can't tell you. Yes, it is Disturbed, right? And Disturbia is a movie, right? Um could be one of those weird ones I see on Tubi. There's an example, Katina. I watch Tubi movies sometimes that I shouldn't be watching. There's my Good Friday confession. <sighs> dear, dear, dear. Yeah. Oh, did I miss someone? Somebody's talking about an antique store. If I missed you, Please speak again, because uh, I think that to happen. Um, Titusville, huh? Linda Justice. Cool. One of my kids lives in Titusville. I've heard of that. And um, there's so many places in Texas, some strange names. My son tells me about them when he's got a delivery. He decided to stay with his company. He just loves I can't tell you how much he loves when I talk about him. See, he says he never watches, and I'm beginning to believe it, because... <laughs> I would have heard something. Yeah. Hmm. Can you imagine? No, I can't. If my daddy was on YouTube, I'd watch. Now, I, he don't have the same political views of mine, but I said, I don't talk about Pollux all the time. So he says, no, you talk about Bob Joyce being Elvis, and that means you're crazy. <laughs> but he says it with love. Uh, he loves me, and he lets me know that. That's one of those choke up types. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry seems to be the hardest word for some people. It's never been for me, uh, but it is for some people. And that's all I want to say about that. Remember when Forrest would say that and he'd get all melancholy? Forrest Gump? <sighs> An American tune. Loves me like a rock. That's a very good uh, 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 choice, uh, Scott Baker, because that is an annoying song. And how many times did Paul Simon talk about his mama? 
his mama, at least four hit records. Mama loves me like a rock. Mama don't take my coat of chrome away. Give me some more. I can't think of a mother and child reunion. I just gave myself one. That's three. There's probably more. He likes to talk about mama. It's like he's a country star. You got to talk about mama. You got to talk about twains. You got to talk about uh, dogs. You got to talk about, did I say trucks yet? <laughs> There's certain things you got to hit. In some of those, uh, especially the old school country songs, right? My husband has been more emotional ever since he had his heart issues. Definitely, Linda. When a man has a heart attack, and I assume a woman do, um, you get very emotional. I've never had a heart attack. I have cardiomyopathy. But uh, thanks to Camzoil, they seem to want to call it that over Mavacanton, which is the other name. Just saw a commercial for it before I came up here. I was watching with Dina. We are all tempted. So I'm going to uh, contact uh, Cam's Oil and see if I can get myself a commercial endorsement. I mean, it's cleared up the blockage and my heart squeezing better. I don't think I'm ever going to get shocked with my defibrillator the way this is going. Uh, we are all tempted. Turn the channel and put on some good Christian music. Sure. I know I'm setting myself up for a comment like that when I say that. Like Anna Wilson. Anna Wilson? Caleb and John or David? Who is that? Anna Wilson? Uh, David Crowder, to name a few. I've heard those names, but I'm blanking on most of them. I'm blanking on all of them. <laughs> so I will have to look back at the lights, live stream if I can find the time and look some of them up. That's a good name, Crowder. That's so American, that name. you you, you got to be from Tulsa if your last name is Crowder, you know? Um, sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, how can I argue? This is why most people don't mention this stuff. I mean... Um, one time, does anybody watch Mike Winger? That's the guy I watch. He's a, a video, uh, you know, basically he's on YouTube. Uh, and he's uh, his whole ministry is done via camera. And, man, he, he makes a lot of money doing it. Not that that's in, his intent. But, um, you know, he gets uh, he does something that's deep theological stuff and gets a half million views. There's a lot of what do you call geek squad out there. There's a lot of those Bible, all they'll argue a point of theology with you all day. Uh, but um, you mentioned the Holy Spirit and they'll say, well, that's Pentecostal. You know, I mean, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Don't get me wrong. But the gifts are for yesterday. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't speak in tongues and I'm proud that I don't. <laughs> So there's extremes, you know, but Mike Winger once uh, said, you know, because he, he preaches these pretty hard correctional type videos often. He says, uh, I'm capable. I think of terrible things, absolutely horrible things. But when I do, I just uh, let it go and, uh, you know, uh, focus on something else. So that, that's the way, because we are all capable of terrible things. Yes, we are, Linda Justice. I've had four husbands, and I, I poisoned each one of them, and they are now buried in my basement. <laughs> oh, just kidding, Linda. I had four husbands, but not married anymore. Yeah. Well, I guess that's just, I've had two wives and I'm not married anymore. Karen would lose her, uh, the benefits that she gets in Social Security from her first husband, Durwood, who isn't, isn't really called Durwood, but I like that name. <laughs> and, um, you know, yeah. Um, uh, so she, she'd lose that and uh, she deserves something from that guy. She does. And, um, she doesn't, uh, think I'm necessary, necessarily someone that she's sure about, uh, me being married material. I've got to continue to work on my day to day, uh, behavior. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I have anxiety. And if you don't keep anxiety in check, 
it can build and you can start a rant. Yeah. So my, my, my psych guy who gives me my Xanax that I'm now addicted to, cause I've been on it since the first divorce, um, said that, uh, what you do then is you count to 10 before you say anything. And most times you will decide that that is not the response you were going to say is not the right one. You know, I mean, here, look at Andy was here today, helping me willing to do anything to help me here on the channel. And so, um, you know, uh, I confess that, uh, you know, I complain about him sometimes, you know, I complain about the fact that we're stuck in New York, mostly not him so much, but stuck in New York when I want to be in Florida, the free state of Florida. Every time Kathy Hochul does another thing that repulses me, I say, oh, God, I got to get out of New York. I got to get out. It's disintegrating. New York City is disintegrating. Now, as women go walk down, the, especially if they're pretty, they want to target for TikTok. They want to target the pretty women. They're looking on their phone, maybe, and some guy will just come and sm smack her, punch her right in the face and keep walking. You know, and you would think there would be around people around him that would uh, that would wrestle that guy to the ground. But even if they did, even if they did um, catch and release, D.A. Bragg will let him go. There's no consequences. They know that. So that's why New York is becoming like Kurt Russell, who could play Bob Joyce if he wanted to. Kurt Russell, uh, he played Elvis twice. Um, he. Uh, he did that movie Escape from New York, and New York City is turning into that. It's turning into that. So you you immediately fired D.A. Bragg. Oh, man, Lee Zeldin would have done such a better job. You see him on Fox sometimes. I love Lee Zeldin. Did we get that song yet? <laughs> Seven Cats, Linda. Oh, she's a crazy cat, cat woman, huh? I understand now. I understand. Probably one of those Trumpers. Probably one of those Trumpers, you know? <laughs> me too me too my god it's an easy choice it's an easy choice but for rfk jr siphon off those votes from biden siphon off those votes from biden biden so nobody got this song yet so i'm just gonna i'm gonna call, put a lid on it here uh, the song that paul simon hates the most Got to put on the right glasses. I'm like uh, Fred Sanford. He says the only time he'll ever do this on stage is he'll start to mutter it when he messes up a song that he really loves. And he has to stop and do it over because that can happen in his age. So he'll uh, he'll mess up a song and he'll start to sing. Um, Slow down, slow down, you move too fast. You got to make the morning last. Just kicking down the cobblestones, looking for fun and feeling groovy. He says, I do not want to sing feeling groovy. Ba -da 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 -da. Feeling groovy. Hello, lamppost, what you knowing? I've come to watch your flowers growing. And you got no rhymes for me. Do, 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 do. Feeling groovy. I've lost the, the key, but whatever. I got no deeds to do, no promises to keep. I'm dappled and drowsy and ready to sleep. Let the morn time drop all its petals on me. Life, I love you. All is groovy. <laughs> the 59th Street Bridge song. Get the clue I gave you about Radio City and where Biden was? The 59th uh, Street Bridge song, uh, and in brackets, feeling groovy. The most hated song that Paul Simon feels he ever wrote. The one he won't do on stage. Certainly won't do the full version. Huh. Anna loves Fred Sanford. Yes, I've got the, yeah, remember, he would go to this drawer of glasses. This happened in a lot of episodes. And, um. He would go to this draw of glasses and he would go through it every time, <laughs> you know, none of them are, are really real anyway, you know, in terms of what he's going to use. Uh, he put on three, four pairs of glasses. Oh, that's no good. And he'd go on, he'd finally get a pair. Oh, there it is. There it is. Then he'd read the phone book or something. Yeah. Yeah. I said it. 
So I understand totally, Katina Swatsworth, if you have not left me in the dust here. But, <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, it's a terrible thing when you realize uh, the power of your vice. You know that Paul talked about it, the things I don't want to do, uh, I, uh, the things I want to do, um, I don't. And uh, what I don't want to do, these I find myself doing. It's like uh, um, the guy, the heroin addict, taking the uh, another spike to the vein. I'm thinking of Lou Reed's song, Sweet Jane, Sweet Jane. I was a big Lou Reed fan, and he was kind of naughty. I mean, his only hit was Walk on the Wild Side. What do you think he was talking about there? <laughs> you know? So Lou Reed performed many times, speaking theater, Passaic theater, uh, the Felt Forum at, uh, connected to Madison Square Garden. And uh, I thought the Brady Bunch did that song. They probably did, but it's not their theme song. That's kind of similar. Uh, come on. I'm, I, I can almost sing that song. Sunny day, everything's a-okay. Or am I doing Sesame Street? It all mashes together at this point. But... Um, Oh, I love Marie McCormick. She's my age, you know. I'm um, like four or five months older than her, but she was born in that very special year of 1956. 1956. Pop on to pop off. So as I uh, leave you, I am quickly going to uh, set up the, uh, the first in the series video how Elvis may have faked his death. We don't know where this will lead us to, but this is like a prequel, and it will bring together rolling video, the people who actually told the story. You'll see plenty of that. Next next edition will be some Priscilla, who I know you love so much. <laughs> I was shocked. I was shocked. My God, you thought you would think I was talking about, uh, you know, um, oh, boy, Jeffrey Epstein or something. I don't know. Uh, how Elvis may have faked his death. Uh, part one is about to now. If you're watching this in the replay, it's up already, you know. But part one, the Bixby investigation. I do an open and I do a close, so I bring my thoughts into it too, as the storyteller. But the whole thing is probably less than 20 minutes, I think, and I'm going to keep it that way. I'm not going to do hour-long versions of this, you know. Because I know people don't want that. We can do long shows when we do these live shows, and a lot of people stay. Thank you. Heartfelt appreciation. That helps my watch time hours. And other people see it's successful, and they join us, and they want to stay for a while. And I appreciate that so very much. Uh, I don't think you missed anything, Irish. Uh, um Irish, whatever, <laughs> uh, because, well, first of all, what you did miss, as soon as I shut me mouth here, uh, that will be a, a, a immediately available in the uh, live section of this channel, the Virtual Church of the Disillusion. You can watch it in the replay, comment there. We'll interact with you there if you see something. Um, but then I'm going to be busy loading the uh, first uh, How Elvis May Have Faked His Death special. I said in the Wednesday night special edition of Worldwide Ramblings, which you can also see in the live section, look for P. Diddy's picture as the thumbnail. Because, uh, you know, our, we talked about his whole scandal, which is so sad and so unfortunate. You're not going to get away with it this time, P. Diddy. Some people say it's considerably worse than the Epstein Island thing. Considerably worse. And what was Justin Bieber's mom thinking when he was 13 and she dropped him off with uh, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, Sean John, whatever you want to say. Just on his clothing line alone, Sean uh, John has probably made, what, close to a billion dollars? I don't know. He's one of the richest guys out there. But he claims, they claim, people claim, because everybody seems to be giving him up, that uh, he paid off some local police to stay away. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. Most police are great. And, um, you know, I almost want to say they get paid so little that you can't almost blame them. But, you know, integrity is important. 
Jack moved to Norman, Oklahoma. Now, what was that place uh, that my son uh, went to for the distribution center? Oh, geez. I've said it so many times, heard it so many times. And I can't get at I can't get it in my head right now. I mean, it's there, but I kind of axed the I kind of axed the file. It's like when somebody says, "I I axed him, I axed him." Well, that's very violent. Never ax anybody, but you can ask them. Yes. Oh, gee, that bothers me because my son's been out of there for a while, so I'm not hearing it every week now. Now he goes out of Odessa, Texas. That's where he fills up his stuff. Yeah, they take pretty good care of him, but it's a rough job when you're unloading trailers. And here comes the Texas summer heat, which will start any day now if it's not. What's the temperature there in Texas now? Huh? Huh? Uh, Cheryl Everhart. Uh, Carrie Doxson. Hi. Just popping on. How how was your heart scan? Well, it has been a while for you, uh, Carrie Doxson. But I think you're new to commenting because I don't. I would remember that last name, uh, Doxson. I would. I think I've had a carry before, but I'm not sure it was you. You're right. It'll be a huge case, uh, Irish Spring. It will be. Um, yeah. You know, I'm just blessed. I don't know why. There's no reason for that kind of amazing grace in my life. There just isn't. I failed God a zillion times deliberately premeditated. It wasn't the devil. It was me. Oh, I, I know the influence of the devil and his demons, you know. I understand that. I do. But with every door, with every temptation, he gives us a door of escape. And I would go over and shut that door. I did it thousands of times. That's that's the confessions of an addict, ladies and gentlemen. Confessions of an addict. So I have to renew my mind. I know these things. I have to renew my mind. I read the word of God and it'll become more and more real in my life. I believe I'm born again, which means there's this struggle going on. If you don't care about your sin, you're not born again. If it's no big, ah, well, whatever. No, I care a great deal about my shortcomings. Once you're born again, sin will never taste as good as it did before. And you do have that darn it experience at some point. Because um, I remember, I remember, I remember when. Memories and not all of them good, like the corners of my aging mind. Uh, my heart scan was uh, good. I, I went through many uh, uh, hoops there at Westchester Medical Center with the great, great Dr. Naidu. It's spelled Naidu, but he says Naidu. And uh, the the technicians, uh, I, I went to the cath lab. Dr. Naidu did that. And um, I uh, had a, a cardio, uh, I had a, you know, I have cardiomyopathy. I had a uh, defibrillator slash pacemaker installed. Only uh, two in 10 people ever get shocked in their lifetime. Uh, and, um, you know, um, I, know, I have known people, well, I didn't know people, Karen knew uh, a swimmer that got shocked three times total. I wonder if swimming had anything to do with it. Can't go in a hot tub anymore. Can't go in a hot bath or anything like that. Can't have that with heat. No sauna for me. <laughs> I got to just walk. And that's what I'll do. It's going to get warm here any day now. Happy Easter, Mr. Jack, you and your wife, my common law wife, uh, Karen. Thank you. Uh, and welcome, Carrie says Linda. M. Silva, you know, I wonder why the media hasn't jumped all over the Elvis Bob Joyce thing. Well, that is a, that is five videos right there, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's been local. Uh, there's been local. Uh, we have a video that uh, I just saw that video. It's in the 21 coincidences that I just put back up. Many people enjoyed that. So if you haven't seen the 21 coincidences why Bob Joyce may be Elvis, you might want to get into that. After about three, four minutes of yapping, I, I go in pretty rapid fire through those 21 coincidences, you know. But it's low tech, you know. I don't even have a mic like this. But you can hear it. Just pump it up a little bit. And um, uh, it's got 46,000 views, you know. And then since I put it up just yesterday, it's got like, 
35 views. So that's something. People are finding it. The 21 coincidences why Bob Joyce may be Elvis. Most of the time when I promo a video that's, say, not doing well, like people say, why don't uh, you have Jack Savage on again? I say because one video has 326 and one has 317. That's just not enough. You know, there's some effort involved here. I got to write the script. I got to try to be funny. You know, I write for Jack Savage. Jack Savage has got to have a mustache and, you know, and, 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 and there's work. And then if you only get those amount of views, you say, well, I'm not going to do a part three. So I'll say that I'll, I'll promo the video and not one person will check it out. Not one. I have seven 7,100 subscribers, and not one person will go and add one more hit to that. And it's the same with one of my most underrated videos, um, the one mofo rule, the one mofo rule. Uh, I think that's a great uh, discovery of mine, that there's this thing where there's always going to be that one car or that one person or whatever that at, at the most appropriate time is going to tick you off. And it's good because it builds a uh, patience in, in your part. I know that. Uh, but sometimes it's a little scary because that one mofo can be, you know, can cause an accident on the road. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I can't believe, um, 29 watching and uh, if you haven't checked in please do please hit the subscribe and like button i'd love to get to 10,000 subscribers you know then i'm just going to say well whatever we get now we get but um not emphasizing bob joyce right now is going to make that more difficult if he says something that's major breaking news we sure have a lot of videos up here on it some of them will come down though but I know which ones that you love the most, and I won't take those down at, uh, presently. That's not the current plan. But this series, How Elvis May Have Faked His Death, is about to premiere as I do this live pop-on to pop-off. I just have to load it. And he came in here, and he did all the tech work for me. And we'll be doing this every week. We'll be doing this every week. I, I can't imagine any less than four installments of this. But of course, if the, you know, the views aren't there, I'll keep going though. Cause I, I believe in this project cause there's so much we didn't share and we're going to have lots of rolling video from the experts themselves from, um, Elvis and, and, um, Priscilla Presley, et cetera, the same stuff other people put up and, and nobody bothers them. So I should be okay. Um, I'm not, uh, not uh, probably going to put up music if it happens to be music and something I share. We'll see what happens then. You know, we'll see what happens then. I might have to cut that out. What is the name of the oil you was talking about? Hi, Ida. Again, oil. You're not talking about my man bow, are you? Oh, it's not Mando, by the way. It's Mando. If you want your man to smell like Grandma's cedar chest, get Mando. This this little tube was twenty bucks. It is the male version of Lumi. Have you seen the uh, Pretty Woman? <coughs> Don't have my water near me either. I forgot it. Maybe you were talking about this because I, I, I show this. It shows a birthday present of mine on March 21st from Karen. Um, not because she was trying to tell me something, but because uh, I, I had said, oh, I want to get, I, I'd like to have that. And she noted that. She noted that. So she got me a Mando Invisible Cream Deodorant Bourbon Leather. For pits, packages, and feet, and butt. Put this anywhere. Now, I wouldn't use this on my pits. I use arid gel for that, which is getting harder and harder to find. So you just go to Amazon and get it there. Uh, but this is this is really nice. I like the way it smells. Um, you know, let's face it, guys. After three, four hours, you need to freshen up. But this last, this last, 
you'll still be smelling like grandma's cedar chest 12 hours later. Just to let you know. Get this for the guys. And uh, Lumi for the women. Lumi for the women. Yeah. For those so who are, want to smell their very best. <laughs> oh. So, uh, the oil for clogged arteries. Well, <laughs> when you say oil, I think of Vasipa helps. Vasipa, but um, uh, you got to have cardiomyopathy. So I, I got to think about what I said in the past that's making you ask me this. Because, okay, you're, you're talking about um, my videos that I have up here. Um, talking about there was blockage. Um, if you have cardiomyopathy, which is a thickening around the heart muscle, I think it helps with the clogged arteries because it would have to because my doctor said there's no no real obstruction right now and there used to be, you know. Um, but camsoils is the miracle drug, also known as Mavacantin. Um, there's commercials for it now on TV. But you got to have pretty good health insurance for this one because it's extremely expensive. If you don't, if it's not covered, you can't get it because it's like $89,000 a year to have this stuff. Um, I pay a $15 copay. But right in the commercial for Camzoils, which is more like C-A-M-Z-O-Y-S, I think that's right. They say Camzoils. Um, they say, you know, there's a way to get it for $10 a, a dose, you know, if it depends what, what you can hook up, what kind of plan you can hook up. Um, so, um, yeah, I had like, a, I had like a 40% blockage, what have you, uh, the, uh, low ejection fraction. See, I don't, I don't talk in those terms anymore. I talk in cardiomyopathy terms anymore. But um, uh, first of all, the doctor said to me, I probably got a false reading when I went to the cath lab that time. Well, it wasn't. It was a special cardiac MRI. That's what you need to have, a special cardiac MRI. And um, uh, so they gave me an ejection fraction that was like uh, 40 or something like that. And that's not good. But later on, when I was at Westchester Medical Center, they said that I'm looking at this report, um, which took them uh, two, three months to read, by the way, here in uh, the city I live in. Um, but right there, you get it within like 30 minutes. By the time you see the doctor, he's got the report. And uh, my ejection fraction was much better then. I can't remember the number. So, um, uh, metoprolol is a very good drug that will help you uh, with heart function. It's a beta blocker. It lowers your heart rate uh, so there's not so much stress on it. And I take that twice a day, 100 milligrams twice a day for that. Because we all can have heart issues, you know. Um, other than that, uh, some of the things you want to do is, uh, is uh, eat uh, and drink the right things and lots of fruits and vegetables and what have you, and um, uh, omega-3, omega-3 oil, as fresh as you can get it. Don't buy the cheap stuff. It's not something, it's like you don't, you don't go to the Dollar Tree to buy your razors for your face. <laughs> you don't want a Dollar twenty-five razor. You don't. You don't. You're going to have toilet paper all over your uh, face. Angela or Angela with an X. Hi, Jack. Looking good for an old man, right? Huh, that's interesting. And now I'm realizing, I'm sorry, it's Angel. Angel X. <laughs> See what uh, I have to get close sometimes. Joseph Kelly even checked in. Hey, everyone. How you all doing on on lunch? And saw you were live. Yeah. I didn't even plan on it. It's impromptu. Pop on to pop off. 
and yet all the people came here and said hello. We still have 29 watching. 30 have liked. Yes, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and the like button. And this helps my uh, views, you know, and it helps my watch time tremendously if people stay on for a while. So that is really much appreciated. Like Adrian has been with us. What's the time there? It's about uh, seven minutes to uh, two Eastern Daylight Savings Time, seven minutes to 2 p.m. I've never been on this early that I can remember. I've been on three or four o'clock a few times, but I don't think I've ever been on this early. And um, Susan Safati found us. Blessed Good Friday to all. Hi, Susan. Um, you'll get to hear the replay that's going to come up here, but I'm about to load how Elvis may have faked his death. It's a multi-chapter, multi-video uh, series with lots of roll-in video and stuff. The first one, we call it uh, the, the, uh, the Bixby investigation. I do the open and the close to it. The whole thing, I think, is under 20 minutes. I'm going to try to keep it that way. Next week, we'll be talking about Priscilla, some of her quotes, you know, the actual people. So there'll be more of that. There'll be more of that, kind of a prequel to what led us to the pastor from Benton, Arkansas. But if he uh, says something in the way of major breaking news, and by the way, in our live shows like Worldwide Ramblings tomorrow night at 10 p.m., going to start even earlier, 10 p.m., not every week, but 10 p.m., um, East Coast time, um, you know, you're free to talk about what happened in the church last Sunday or, you know, people send me stuff from the various uh, Bob Joyce Elvis Facebook groups. You're welcome to keep doing that. True Believers and uh, uh, Bob Joyce Alive as Elvis Presley, whatever. And uh, you're welcome to keep doing that. And I encourage you to do that. That doesn't mean, Susan, that you forward me everything under the sun. And I say, oh, my God, here's nine forwards from... Uh, from uh, uh, Susan, <laughs> but I do appreciate your spirit and you've given me some good stuff. And I thank you. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Here's somebody new. Lena, not Lena Horn. Koolhoff. Hi, Jack. Greetings from the Netherlands. So that's so cool. You know, I mean, I'll never go to the Netherlands, unfortunately. I can't even make it to the Dark Shadows convention I want to go to in Burbank because it's so gosh darn expensive. Airfare is almost $600 a ticket. Then there's the hotel. Then there's the price to get in. One of the days are free at the Dark Shadows convention. But I'd so like to be there. Karen would like to visit her um, her cousin, Bobby Reed, the actor, look him up. He's got a great website. He's been in a lot of things. Bobby with a Y, Bobby Reed, R-E-E-D.com. You're welcome, Bobby, for me promoing you here. Angel X says, hi, Jack, looking good. Yeah, I said that already. Um, but welcome, Susan. Welcome. So, yeah, I think I think we got it covered, huh? What platform is it on, Jack? Well, right here at YouTube, I think, if that's what we're talking about, the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned is my channel. The Virtual Church of the Disillusioned. Once you hit the subscribe button, it'll be easy to find. And hit the like button, and then hit the notification bell. And you'll get notice when we come on like this, impromptu, impromptu. So glad, though, to hear from Lena from the uh, Netherlands. Um, feel free to email me about, uh, what's special to you and your community. Give us a feel for your community because we know nothing. I know nothing about it. Jack, the fair guy, F A I R Jack, the fair guy, like you're going to the carnival at gmail.com. Jack, the fair guy at gmail.com. I used to play fairs and festivals with my second wife, a professional clown. You can't make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. You just can't. So I got to load this special, everybody. I do. I do. See the picture of, uh, I know it's kind of hard to see, Elvis with Marilyn Monroe, Elvis with Priscilla at the bottom. You can see Elvis better than you can Priscilla, and some of you are saying that's okay. And um, 
Elvis with, could it be Walena Hattie Joyce? Some people think that. And maybe her mom. I don't know. I don't know. Um, we're talking about water bottles. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. The 21 could convince, uh the 21. <laughs> I think I need that water, gang. Um, you're talking about the video, the, uh, the 21 coincidence coincidences. Why can't I say the word anymore? Why Bob Joyce may be Elvis is right here in my list of videos. It's down pretty far because I did it two years ago. I uh, look, even look a little younger. I think not as much white here, but then again, there wouldn't be any white here if I wanted it to be that way. I finally decided to be a little more authentic since that is my color of my entire head, my entire hair. But you know us men. Joseph Kelly, has anyone... Oh, I, I see that was your introduction, asking how we're doing. I'm sorry. Um, so you just go to the Virtual Church of the Disillusioned and hit videos, and you'll, you'll have to scroll down a ways before you'll see the, the top 21 coincidences why Bob Joyce may be Elvis. 46,000 plus views, and it's back up right now. So give that a watch. Give that a watch. But don't let it get in the way. I really need this to work of uh, how Elvis may have faked his death, a multiple-part series that could lead to my first Zoom interview. So I need the encouragement. I need you to share it wherever you can. It's like 20 minutes. Share it on your Facebook. Share it wherever you share videos, okay, that they'll let you do it. Well, hi, Doris Sutton Schroeder. Hi, Jack. And I feel bad that we're wrapping up here because we've been on for longer than I thought. Already an hour and a half. Amazing. Amazing. I just was going to come on for like 20, 25 minutes, but people find us. Hi, Jack and all. Doris from Benton, Kentucky. So you can watch the replay here in the live section of the channel. And I hope you'll watch our new uh, video series on uh, Elvis that's going to debut as soon as uh, I shut up and uh, do what I have to do to load it. The first edition, there'll be one like every Thursday or Friday for a while. And next week, it will focus more on Priscilla. Morning, says uh, Belinda Lemon, who I think is really Margaret. Well, good morning and goodbye, because we're about ready to say goodbye for this, but watch the replay. Um, and I've got a promo for the Saturday night show that I'll, I'll put up later. I don't want to bombard because I'll be competing with myself and hurting myself, you know? Not that I'm a cutter or anything like that. I'm not. That would not be something I would be. No, no, no. Wyoming. Yeah, Wyoming. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I think we uh, we have it covered. Watch the replay, though, as I say, because we had a lot of fun in the first hour and 25 minutes or whatever. Thank you, Doris. I appreciate that so much. So let me get that new uh, series up and running here. It'll take a little bit. How Elvis May Have Faked His Death, Part 1, The Bixby Investigation. Oh, how I miss Bill Bixby. I realized that when I uh, started looking through the Bill Bixby material from the Elvis files. Loved him so much, so much. Some people should never die. He was one of them. Saturday night, tomorrow night, 10 p.m. East Coast time for Worldwide Ramblings. That's our next live show. Talk to you later. I appreciate you so much. You make this channel happen.